design consultation. Okay. Okay. I'm sure they'll be fine with that. Okay. Free and design right. consultation. Yeah. Hey, Brian, can you hear me? Hi, Haley. Happy Monday. Okay. I'm not sure if this is through my uh, computer or my phone because I dialed in as well. So okay. is the audio okay on your end? It sounds a little like you are in a, hold on a second. Um, have we started this? Hold on, we, this is all. Um, varying degrees of success with Home Advisor. And what we wanted to do here, because it's, it's a terrific source for leads, because they are spending so much money. You guys see the commercials, they're everywhere. And they are making leads every second of the day, probably, right? I would imagine it's pretty close to every second, isn't it? Yeah, it's every one to two seconds we're getting another one. So wow. plenty of leads yeah. out there, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, pretty amazing. And so um, what we hope to accomplish here is um, Haley is going to share some best practices with you. Of This is how you really um, do well and make money from Home Advisor leads. And so I'm really excited. I've seen this. Um, I. I uh, got a sneak peek at this presentation, and um, it's it's good. There's word tracks in there, everything. So um, I would be you know out with um, with uh, pen and paper. We are recording this, so I will make it available to all of you, um, so you can listen in and um, pick up on uh, the word tracks and the suggestions and all of that. Um, that Haley is going to share with us. Um, before we jump into this, I want to um, let you guys know that this is the last week that you could still get early bird pricing for Accelerate. We are, we are really close. I think we've got um, 35 or 36 seats left. And so if you have been thinking at all about Accelerate, Home Advisor, by the way, is going to be there. Um, they're one of our sponsors. Um, but we've got a killer two days in store for you. And what I will do is um, when we get started here, I'll put the link in the chat. And for those of you that have not grabbed your seat yet, um, if you are... I would look at your calendar and seriously consider coming um, because I think we're going to be sold out um, pretty soon. And by the way, um, Haley, I don't know if you know this, but we sold out in 18 and we sold out last year. Last year, we actually had to bring a table in, but the room has a hard limit of how many people we can get in there. Um, I think it's like 191 something like that. And we're coming up against that. Um, oh, and then the, the last thing too is um, you guys can also uh, still get a free copy of my new book called The Seven Secrets to Becoming a Wealthy Contractor. Um, I'll put a link in the in the chat for that as, as well. Um, but the book is being really well received. Um, got another really great um, note from somebody this morning that I have a lot of respect for. And uh, so I'd love for everybody to get their hands on a copy of the book. All right. So um, those are all of my housekeeping, all of my announcements. Um, Haley's going to be driving this. I will be watching the chat. So if anybody's got questions, put them into the chat or the Q&A box. And I will make sure that I ask Haley um, your questions. Um, all right, Haley, ready to go? Let's do it. 
Awesome. Do you want to let them know a little bit about who you are and what you do at Home Advisor? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so first, uh, just to piggyback off that, yeah, we'll, we will be at Accelerate Live, and um, I certainly encourage you if you haven't gotten a ticket to do so. Um, we're, you know, Brian and I, we're in the same space in terms of helping companies grow their businesses and you guys being proactive and jumping on things like this means that you're all, um, you know, trying to do that, trying to figure out what new trends are, trying to figure out best practices. And so one of the best ways that, um, you know, to continue that learning is to definitely do those kind of intensive seminars. So I do encourage you to go. Um, and, and thanks everyone for for jumping on. I know it's the week before the holidays and uh, I'm sure you're all busy wrapping things up. So we do appreciate it. I'm going to try and keep it probably to about 30 minutes. And Brian, as you said, he'll be uh, monitoring the chat box. So um, I always like kind of collaborative, uh, you know, and, and, and less formal webinars because I want you to be able to ask questions during it if something is not making sense. And also, Brian, uh, with you being an expert with all of this, feel free to jump in or, or echo oh, anything I that I might say. <laughs> okay, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, just like that. You got it down. Yeah. So anyway, um, my name is Haley Gray. I am the senior manager here over at Home Advisor. I also work for Andy's List. Um, two separate brands. Uh, we did merge back in 2017. I like to just mention that because it can draw some confusion. Uh, but two separate brands. So today we'll focus on Home Advisor. Um, I have a history in business development as well as market research. I used to live out in California and and worked for a company that uh, helped large corporations like Google and Warner Brothers and uh, the Gates Foundation figure out ways to market to the millennial and Gen Z generations. So this kind of stuff is kind of in my background. It's something I'm real passionate about. My mom was in a small business. She was in the insurance industry. And, um, and so I kind of watched how that happened. So being able to help uh, other companies, you know, stay ahead of the curve and grow, grow their business is kind of what I'm all about. Um, so anyway, also my team, we primarily work with our national partnerships. So that would be G4 Marketing. We also work with um, CRM systems like MarketSharp. We also work with manufacturers like Pella Windows. So, um, and then we also help out some of those larger companies within the network um, also grow their business. So with that, some things we're going to cover today. Um, I'm just going to spend a few minutes touching on some current trends that we're seeing in the home services marketplace, kind of queue it up for you guys. Then we'll dive into Home Advisor and overview at a more high level, uh, just so that you kind of know where we're at in 2019 as we're approaching 2020. Then we'll go into programs and products to grow your business, so our different lead sources, some common questions that we have, um, and then follow-up cadence and measuring success, best practices with using our services. And then some partner benefits um, of being in the G4 network and next steps for you. Um, a lot of times too, with you know, we have quite a lot of pros in our network, and and as Brian mentioned, you know, some experience extreme success, and then some you know really struggle. And so I think oftentimes it comes down to just really kind of getting a grip on how it all works and how to to think about it. And so that's really what I want to hone in on today. So anyway, some current trends in the home service marketplace. Now, none of these three companies are in the home service marketplace, but they are trends of what we see today. So as you all know, everything and anything can be done on your phone. Um, you know, it can be done in the, in the click of a button. You've got whatever you need. And so consumer expectations are changing rapidly as all of these tech companies are inventing new ways to make life easier. Um, you know, I don't think... The hotel industry ever thought they could be disturbed, but sure enough, Airbnb came about. I bet, you know, um, you know, movie distributors and movie theaters never saw Netflix coming and, and so on and so forth. And so the home service industry is absolutely no different. Um, more and more consumers are coming online to find service professionals. Um, and, and, you know, there's a multitude of reasons. They want to read your reviews. They want the ease. They want the... Um, just ability to be able to get something taken care of quickly, again, because now they can book a table within two seconds and, you know, read reviews on different products if they want to. The same is true for service professional companies, for, you know, the materials that you're using, so on and so forth. And so it's really important to acknowledge the fact that this is the direction um, that the world is really trending. So you may be a company that is totally built on referrals, and that is fantastic. You really can't beat word-of-mouth referrals when it comes to conversion 
Um, you might be, you know, in your town, the, the most well-known roofing contractor. Um, and that's great. And you may be booked out for six months. But the thing is, you want to think long term. So even if you're just starting to get on this wagon of, I need to build up my online presence, I need to be online where consumers are, um, that's really important. Again, even if just to establish those reviews. Um, quick sidetrack story, my mom being in the insurance industry, she killed it the 70s through uh, 2000. And she was primarily word of mouth referrals and and going door to door and, and just really knocking it out of the park. Um, but the 2000s hit, when that happened, of course, the tech boom happened and a lot of her competitors, especially those bigger brands, uh, realized that they could make it real easy for people to buy insurance. And so they started moving everything online and she didn't think she needed to because she was doing just fine, she'd always done fine. Well, sure enough, consumer expectations started changing and uh, they wanted to go with the companies that made it easy to pay their bills and choose their plans and do all of that online. So the moral of that story, because she ended up actually um, not being able to keep up with that, because by the time she realized it was a bit too late, um, is that even if you're doing great now, it is important to just be to acknowledge those trends that are happening. So again, those consumer expectations are changing rapidly and a lot of times, especially in the service professional industry, I mean, you can't turn things around quickly. It takes a while, especially remodeling projects or roofing projects. Um, you might not have sales technicians available to come out the next day when they're expecting to see you, whatever it might be. Um, and so what we're really trying to do too over here at Home Advisor is try and bridge that gap between what you guys are actually capable of doing, how quickly you're capable of responding, and then um, what those consumer expectations actually are. And then here are just some generational buying patterns. Um, so I just thought this was some interesting information to put in here. So we've actually found that millennials right now are the largest buying market. Uh, the reason I want to say that is because of, of for homes is um, because you know that you could probably spend like five hours just talking on how to market to millennials. Um, and a lot of people too think, you know, that's not really in my demographic. We're looking for more of the higher value projects, which if you look at that, uh, graph to the right, it's true, baby boomers and Gen Xers do spend more per year on average on projects, but we're seeing that these millennials are starting to come into the market and they're buying fixer-uppers. And with that being said, it means they're going to need to do a lot of home improvement projects. So they're paying less now, knowing that they're going to have to pay more later. So you've got this gigantic market of people who are coming in, buying homes, knowing that they're going to have to do stuff, who are very keen on wanting to resell their homes and build that home value. Um, the reason I want to say that too is because they are definitely an online generation. Um, so as, you know, baby boomers are, you know, moving into that living in space and downsizing, um, you just want to make sure that you're focusing on every single generation that there is. Uh, another thing that I'll kind of touch on a little bit, you, you never know who's on the other side of the lead that you're getting. So you've got boomers who prefer, you know, to have a phone conversation with you and to make it very consultative um, decision when it comes to improving their home. And, uh, and then you've got Gen Xers who, you know, more and large, they're going to be the, the biggest part of the workforce who's, come, who's got kids at home and then at 9 o'clock they can check their email and that's where they're going to want to see the follow-up message from you. And then you've got millennials who want to chat with you via the app or a text message. So it's important to kind of keep this in mind that you don't know who's on the other side and what their buying trends or patterns are. And so to kind of be all over the board when it comes to making sure that you're following up appropriately. Um, oh, and with that too, just, uh, so millennials on average do more home projects. Uh, and when you think about the fact they're buying fixer uppers, so that's going to be more of those HVAC electrical plumbing projects. So it's going to be, they're not spending as much per year because they're doing smaller revenue projects. Whereas you've got like um, boomers and Xers who would probably be doing more of those remodels or replacing an entire roof or things like that, which is what drives, they're doing less projects, but for higher revenue, which is why you see that um, those differences in numbers. All right, so now we'll dive into Home Advisor and, uh, and kind of where we're at right now. So we're currently actually about 220,000 pros in our network nationally, um, doing over 500 different categories. So if you're in cleaning, if you're in handyman, if you're in, uh, you know, I heard Handy Pro was on there, so, you know, changing homes to be able to uh, acclimate to disabilities, if you've uh, roofing, whatever it might be, we've got categories. And what's unique too is that we can actually tailor what you do. So 
if you want to service a certain amount of zip codes, you don't want to go far, it doesn't make sense, you know, because being busy isn't necessarily being profitable. Um, so what we can do is we can say, okay, let's focus on these zip codes. So you're only going to get leads here and tone it in a little bit. And then you only want to do replacing roofs. You don't want to, you don't want to do repairs because you go out there and the job's really small and it's, you know, whatever it might be, you only want installation and you only want asphalt roofing. Um, we can tailor that. So when a consumer comes to us, which is every one to two seconds looking for something, uh, we're, you're only going to be matched if it's exactly what you've told us that you want to do. Um, so that's one unique thing about uh, Home Advisor, um, the, the Home Advisor platform. And then better ways or, or reasons that homeowners are coming to us. So they'll either come to us through some search engine like Google where they, um, you know, will type in, I need a roofer in Denver. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll show our directory of pros and we'll say, here are five roofers that are on the Home Advisor platform. Um, or they're going to see our commercial and just go directly to Home Advisor. Um, of course, that kind of organic traffic is always, always really great quality. But kind of going back, too, to what Brian mentioned at the beginning is we spend quite a lot of money trying to, uh, to build up, the, you know, getting on that front page of Google and putting our contractors there and doing all that SEO and SEM marketing and the television and radio. So we're doing all of this heavy lifting so that you don't have to, so that we can place you and your company on that front page without you having to do a lot of that um, heavy lifting. And so different reasons too, um, you know, our owner, we do background checks against our owners. We make sure the company is licensed in whatever work they're taking on. Um, you know, it's an on-demand service, so we do have different product types, which I'll get into, which can mean that somebody literally at your home, basically the Uber of home, home services, um, you know, and then also you, you might ask your, your neighbor for, and I'm just going to stick to roofing. I don't know. It's in my, in my mind today, but you might ask your neighbor for a roofer. Who did your roof? They tell you, but you call that person and they're booked out for six months because they're, you know, the roofer of the town and they're, you know, they're booked out, but this is, something that you need to do now. Maybe you just got your funds or, you know, maybe it's an emergency and you really need to replace your roof. Um, so where else are you going to go now that your neighbor's referral didn't work out? You're going to go online. Or maybe you do talk to your neighbor's referral, but then you're like, well, you know, a $30,000 roof, I, I'd really like to see who else. I'd like to talk to other companies just to make sure it's the right fit. It's quite a lot of money to spend, and I, I want to make sure I'm making an educated decision. So they're going to go to find other um, companies to to get multiple bids. So now going into our platform and different lead types. So uh, when you sign up with Home Advisor, you're going to pay our annual membership fee, which starts at $288. Um, that covers the licensing, the background checks that we do, but it also gets you your profile on Home Advisor, um, and then also listed on some of our partner network sites, which would be This Old House, and Realtor.com, CraftJack. So you're building up all of this brand exposure and they're getting placed in front of consumers for under a dollar a day. And that's just, just, just the annual membership. Um, it's not contractual, so it's not binding. Well, you know, it's just kind of the startup cost and you just pay it once a year. So it's not, it's not like you can't cancel if you needed to or um, anything like that. Another question I get is how do we qualify those leads that come through? So when the consumer is going down, you know, goes to Home Advisor, they say, I need a pool. Um, and then we take them down a four to 12 page questionnaire. We say, well, are, do you, are you building a new pool? Is it above ground or is it in the ground? Are you looking for fiberglass or are you looking for vinyl? And uh, is this a home or is this commercial? Is, are you planning and budgeting or are you ready to hire? And by the time that they finally get to that last page where they fill out their um, information, which again, you're only going to be matched to them if it's if you do in-ground concrete pools. So you're not going to be matched if they click fiberglass. Um, by the time they fill out all that information, first of all, your lead, whether it's you working those leads directly or whether you have some customer care reps working those, they have a lot of information. They already have more information than you would should it be a television ad or a, you know a billboard. You've got this questionnaire that they've essentially filled out. Um, and then also, by the, so that should help with your, your conversation once you do call them. Um, but also, I mean, we see quite a large drop-off rate by the time they get to that last page. We do that intentionally. I think it's like a 70 to 80% drop-off rate. Um, and we do that because we don't want tire kickers just putting through a lead. We don't want people who are just 
we have a, a true cost guide to help those who are just really just trying to get a mind frame, mindset around, you know, what would a new roof cost? Because we don't want you guys being matched if, if they're not serious. So we do our best to try and get those folks, um, you know, pointed into a different direction. But should they fill out that questionnaire, um, that's then what's going to go to you. Let's just say, for example, that they put in a disconnected phone number because they, you know, it is the internet. Um, you certainly can request a credit for that if, if it's not, if it's bogus contact information. Um, and on that, we actually have, go ahead. You know, I was gonna ask, well, go ahead and finish that. Then I've got a question about this. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so we do have a credit system in place. So if you get, maybe it's a renter who wants to install an H, HVAC unit, um, but they don't have the authority to do it. You can request credits on that if it's a disconnected phone number. Um, maybe, you know, for some reason you got matched in a zip code that wasn't profiled for you, which shouldn't happen, but if it does. Um, or maybe somebody said that they needed asphalt, but really it was tile. They, they got the task wrong. Um, so we do have a credit system in place to, to try and help you with your cost of marketing. Uh, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, so my question is, this system that they go through um, as far as answering these questions. Is this for every service kind of across the board? There are a number of hoops that they have to jump through because one of the issues has been with lead aggregators is that we get leads, but they're, they're just not good leads. They're, you know, like you said, maybe the phone number's disconnected or the people um, didn't really want uh, the service, how they filled out the form, I don't know, but they'll, you know, you call them and either they don't pick up or if they do pick up, sometimes it's like, well, I don't know what you're doing. I got three other calls. Um, so this is on every service. You're taking them through this. Yeah. So um, things that are a little bit smaller projects, maybe it's just, you know, repairing drywall might only yield a three to four page questionnaire. Okay. And then ones like bathroom, and then um, the remodeling path, for example, will be closer to 12 pages because so we want to know. Well, um, so the minimum of three to four up to 12. Correct. Yeah, because for remodels, for example, they have to choose three different projects within a room for it to be yeah. considered a remodel. So they need to be able, it needs to be plumbing, a new countertop, and new tile floors in order for, you know, we don't we just want someone to say, I need a remodel and it really just be a plumbing project. Um, so that one's gonna be a little bit longer because we're gonna try and dive in a little bit deeper for that. Um, of course, people can, uh, and we do have filtering systems on the back end as well. So if there was a phone number that was like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, we have a filtering system that tries to weed those out and not even push them through. Um, in fact, I've put through a couple of, of my own projects for my own house, um, and I've used my home advisor email address, and they don't let me push it through until they call me to verify. Uh, every single time, it's kind of annoying, because uh, I need to stop using that email address. But because um, it says at homeadvisor.com, so it thinks I'm spam. Uh, so, yeah, and I mean, there, there are going to be times where that happens with a bogus phone number. I mean, we do live, robocalls are up. 40%, you know, people aren't really wanting to answer phone calls. Um, you may try calling that consumer several times and they never answer, um, things like that, which you do get their email address, that's, that's part of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, those things certainly do happen and, and I'll kind of touch on how you should view the whole cost of marketing with us. Um, so it is to be expected, uh, you know, with just online advertising, but we do, again, have credit systems in place and filtering systems in place and encourage you to try not just the phone number, but other things. And even if they say, you know, I was just planning and budgeting, I didn't want people to call me. We actually, if you see in the bottom right there, I kind of cut it out, sorry about that. Um, but we did, we actually moved our compliance guidelines on to the front, rather than just like, you're clicking here for our terms and conditions. Um, so now we're trying to make it very obvious to the consumer, you're going to get phone calls. Because sometimes that throws people off. Um, you know, and then they can take it out on the contractor. Like, I didn't want people calling me, you know, and you're the third, fourth guy that called me. Um, and also on that, you know, over 50% of our leads, we can't even match to a single contractor because the demand is so high compared to the amount of contractors who are proactively taking on leads. 
Um, so the majority of time, you probably are going to be the only contractor getting matched, unless, of course, you're in a very dense market. Of yeah, let's be careful if not. Yeah, let's be careful not to say that. That may happen, um, but I would be. I would not be prepared, or I would. Let's just say I would be prepared, and I would think if it's me that every single one of these leads is going to what's the max number that it can go to is it three so for repair repairs it's typically three and for installations it's four okay so i would if the, if it's me i'm gonna set this up um and i'm gonna think it through as if i know that this lead is going to three or four other people is there ever a case where it's going to go to, to more than four people the only time that that could ever possibly happen, because, you know, and even in our terms and conditions, the maximum is four. So, like, we can't send it to more than four. Um, and nor would we want to. That would create a very poor experience for both consumers and contractors. Um, is if somebody put a request in for an installation of an asphalt roof, and then they said, oh, wait a second, I need a tile. And then they put in a second request. So they've just been matched to four. And that, which, um, you know, anyway, they, and then they put in another request for installation of tile, and now they've been matched to eight. Yeah. Very rare that that would ever happen. That could happen. Very rare that they would ever be matched um, that way. But um, I think what happens a lot, too, with consumers is they put it in, and then the first guy that calls, calls 25 times because he's like, I paid for that lead, and I'm getting in touch with the consumer, which is great. You do want to call quickly, and you want to call often. Um, so then by the time the second and third guys call, the consumer is so uh, overwhelmed that they're like, why are you calling me? But it kind of goes into your scripting of just, you know, I'm, okay. you know, I, I do want to make sure you're getting enough bids, et cetera. So, um, okay. let's go. On. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So now diving into uh, the different lead products, just uh, kind of high level. So we do have that market match, which is the one we were just referring to. And that's where, um, the the contractor or the consumer is going to mat get matched with one to four co contractors. Um, they do this for ease and also, um, you know, because they're wanting multiple bids and they're wanting to get multiple, uh, you know, to be able to see multiple reviews. Um, so in this situation in particular, back to Brian's point, always pretend like there are four being matched because you want to be quick. You want to be the first. You want to, you know, you want to, feel like you're fighting for a lead and really proving your company as to be the, the one that they should be going with. Um, you know, with that, it's, it's interesting because the biggest complaint we hear from contractors is that nobody ever answered. The biggest complaint from homeowners, uh, ironically, is that nobody ever called. So just making sure that you're, um, you're following up quickly on these. And then also just to make sure that you do have a very robust profile, I'm gonna hit that real uh, that emphasize that really hard because uh, even if you just look over here to the left, like who would you choose of these options? Yeah. Um, so this is what this is what the consumer would see, and they're going to say, "Well, I don't want Castro's because you know they hardly have reviews, and the reviews they do have are poor." Um, so I'm probably going to go with Homeland Remodeling um, right. just to make sure that you're building building up that presence. Yeah. And then the other. Uh, so the market matches our bread and butter. It's our most voluminous lead type. I would say maybe 60 to 70% of our leads come in that way. Um, so if you're looking for volume in particular, you'll want to make sure that you've, you've got that, um, you know, ramped up. But another one is called exact match. So this is really why it's important to have uh, stellar reviews, get a lot of reviews, and then to make sure that you're um, really managing that profile. Because what will happen is a consumer will go to Google or they'll go to our directory. They want to kind of be more in control of the situation and who they're being matched with. So remember, market match is more like, hey, home advisor, match me up to pros, have them call me. Exact match is more along the lines of, I would like to, you know, browse who's in my area and call them directly or send them a note to, to call me to, for them to give me a quote. Um, so this lead type is going to be a little bit more expensive. It's going to be 1.5 the cost of market match, reason being because it's a one-to-one -one connection. Um, so th they typically yield higher conversion. Um, but extremely, again, extremely important to just make sure that you're, um, you're, you're totally robust on profile management. 
Also, so, though, as soon as you get that, hold on. As soon as Haley, you get that, I'm sorry. Yeah, go I'm ahead. Sorry, Haley. Yeah. Um, exact match. So this is a different program than the one that you just showed us. Correct. So within Home Advisor, we have we actually have six different products that can, that contractors can opt into. Okay. Um. Yeah, so these two, so, Market Match and Exact Match, are, are, are the two main ones, the main right. ways that consumers are going to find them. So Exact Match, the consumer is choosing who they want to get a quote from. Correct. So Not, me as a consumer. So in the first one, you guys, through your algorithm, are delivering these four companies. These are the ones that all basically got the lead. Then, Correct. Consumer fills up. Yeah. Okay. So, so then. Consumer. Sorry. Yeah, no, so sorry. For market match. Yeah. Go ahead. For market match, the consumer fills out that questionnaire, says, Home Advisor, match me up. We say, okay, Haley's roofing, uh, Brian's roofing, right. and so on are all tasked for this. And we shoot you the lead immediately as soon as it comes in, and then it's on you to follow up. So, but they have the option then of saying, no, I want to match myself or I want to find the pros myself that, and then they get here. Um, and it's actually kind of a model that we're really trying to emphasize and drive consumers to, because again, consumer and contractor satisfaction is really uh, what's going to help us continue to grow. So if you guys are experiencing great conversion and are able to get in touch with a consumer that knows that it's you, that's going to be calling and, you know, um, then that's going to yield to, you know, you know, us continuing yeah, yeah. No, to this seems, do well. Yeah. This, I could see how you're not going to get as many leads through exact match as you would with, um, with the other one. Um, but this probably is going to be a, a little stronger, a little stronger lead. Yep. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So okay. they'll go, they'll go and then they'll decide and they'll say, you know, I want to talk to Premier Pool and Spa. They'll say, I want to get a quote from you. You get pushed the information, call them immediately. And then the consumer also could possibly say, you know, I also want to talk to Flowmaster. Of course, installing a pool is going to cost a lot of money. Most people are going to want multiple bids. That's just kind of the way of the world. Um, and so just, you know, making sure again, that even though it's not the market match, that you're still the mindset of, I need to be quick with these leads and I need to be thorough with how I follow up. And, and just, and, and by the way, if I can throw something in about this, so everybody hates multiple uh, bids. Everybody hates that objection. You need to have a system in place. Typically, you know, a good one call close system for getting, first off, you have to get in the house, which she's going to give us some um, tips on how you do that. But when you actually get in the house, one of the worst things that you could do is not have um, a presentation that builds so much value that now they're not going to give you that objection, which is, well, I'm waiting to get three more quotes, which is like, Everybody hates that, right? We hate getting that. But it's on you to have a good enough presentation because that quote or that objection can come from any kind of lead. It's, it's going to be more baked in with a home advisor lead just because that's the way their system is set up. And when somebody, a homeowner goes to home advisor, you know that they're already thinking three quotes, three quotes, three quotes. And so you have to be prepared for that and have a good, um, uh, uh, again, you, it, it all comes down to the sales presentation and the value you, you build into it and hopefully take care of that objection early so that you can avoid it when it does come up. Because it will come up if you allow it to. If you just show up like everybody else, anyway. So I hope everybody gets that. Yeah, and I don't, I don't even know, I really understand the fear and, you know, being someone who uh, is matched with other pros or with the consumer has that kind of objection of, you know, I'm just, I'm looking. The thing is, like, you just, just stand out and have 
excellent sales presentation, excellent customer care, excellent follow-up process, yep. you know, just checking in, making sure, you know, you got the quotes and seeing if there were any other questions that we could answer for you um, that would, you know, help with your decision and potentially going with us. I mean, I actually, I just had a, a company come to my house last week canvassing and uh, it worked. Well, it worked to get him in my home. Yeah. He was there for two hours and quoted me on siding for $22,000. And while I, I liked the company and, um, you know, I need the project done, that's true. But that's a lot of money for me to just spend because somebody walked up to my house and just, you know, it, it's, it's overwhelming. And so, yeah. yes, I'm probably going to ask, I'm probably going to go online, probably through exact match and find another contractor to, um, you know, come and compare what products they have and, you know, it's not even cost objection. I don't want the bottom of the barrel. Uh, you know, I don't want the lowest bid because it's something for my home. But I do want to just know that I'm making an educated decision and that I'm making a smart decision. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, that, that canvasser, they knew that we were serious and they knew that um, we needed it done and he made a lot of sense and he made a p positive impact on us, but he never followed up. Um, oh, wait, was the and, and I'm busy. Was the canvasser the same one that gave you the quote? So no, they had um, they had uh, guys come by okay. and ask if they could bring back a sales guy, and they Got they okay. brought in the sales guy a couple hours later. Okay, yeah, because yeah, yeah. that's the right way to do it. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, By the way, just so anyway, out of, these are hey Haley, just out of yeah. curiosity, yeah. did they have an iPad presentation? Um, he actually, let's see, it was more, he did, he did have a, yeah, it obviously didn't make an impact on me mentally. It wasn't me that was driving most of it. So, okay. um, I remember all of the quotes, he had a computer and all of the quotes were written down on a piece of paper, um, yeah. all of the metrics. Did he offer um, you, did he offer you financing? Uh, he did offer us financing, um, which definitely, definitely helped with the, um, you know, when you break down $22,000 into monthly, yeah, yeah. that definitely helped. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so going into, going into the, uh, the, the other kind of lead types and I'll just kind of skim through these. I won't be as intensive. Um, going back to the, the fact that Biggest complaint, homeowner, nobody ever calls. Biggest complaint, contractor, nobody ever answers. Um, we've built out these new products that allow that connection. Uh, we we kind of act as that middleman now to help with that connection. So when a consumer is going down the market match path, we'll say, hey, do you want to talk to a contractor now? And if they say yes, then we actually have a system that will dial out and the first contractor to answer and physically press one. So they'll hear, Haley in Denver needs a roof. Are you interested in quoting on this project? Uh, yeah, so I'll press one. Only then are you going to be charged with that lead. Uh, so if you, if you miss the call or if you don't want it or too busy, don't worry about it. You're not going to get charged for it. Um, but if you can handle more leads and you want the lead, press one, you're charged for it, and then we call the consumer and we drop off the line, and now you've got a warm transfer, so you're not even having to chase that lead. Um, next up is instant booking. So that's kind of, again, big Uber for contractors. So you can actually sync your schedule. Um, we integrate with a lot of different companies. So you can view in your profile those that we integrate with. It would be companies like uh, Market Shark and Service Titan and, and then Help Desk, but also like Google and Outlook. So um, you, can, you can sync up your calendars and then a consumer can, when they're going through the exact match path, um, you know, where I showed you, you could get a quote, it'll say view pricing and scheduling. So then they can actually see that you're, you've got somebody available on Friday at 3 p.m. who can come out. Uh, so the consumer says, all right, I want that spot on his calendar. Um, again, think like millennial and just this instant gratification generation. Um, you get pushed that lead, you confirm it, call the consumer, definitely call the consumer. I would encourage you to do that. Some people don't. Um, confirm the lead. Call them a day or two before. Hey, just wanted to make sure that we're good to go for tomorrow at three o'clock. Um, that way, you know, you can also set expectations and find out any other information that might help your sales rep when he's in the house. 
Um, other lead products, which are our newest kind, same day service. So that's, let's just say I've got off tomorrow and I wanna see a contractor. Um, I, you know, I say I'm available from one to five for someone to come give me an estimate on roofing. Now we're probably primarily going to see this lead type be more abundant within quick turnaround projects, HVAC, electrical, et cetera. Um, but uh, that's gonna be shotgunned out to the network of pros who service that area and that task. And the first pro to say, I want that gets it, and they're the only one that's charged. So again, ignore it, you're not charged. Um, and then finally, job opportunities. So let's just say you've set your budget to $500, but we've actually got you know $20,000 worth of demand. So we're not gonna automatically send you leads because then you would really go over your, your spin target. So instead, we're gonna say, hey, we've got an opportunity for you. You know, this homeowner needs a, a new roof. Would you like to quote this job? And if you as the contractor say, yeah, I'd like to quote them. At the same time, the consumer is showed a list of contractors in the area. And she can choose who she wants to give a quote or get a quote from. And if it's a mutual selection, so think like matchmaking service for home services, if you mutually opt into each other, then and only then does it turn into a lead. So some really cool new products to, again, help with that conversion, help with you being able to kind of track your cost of marketing, et cetera. Um, so if you're not, if you're on Home Advisor and you're not opted in, I encourage you to look into those, especially if you've been with us for a while and you may not be aware of those products. Um, and then if you're not with us on Home Advisor, definitely talk to your your national account rep about those different products. Um, the best practices. So each of you, when you sign up or if you're already on, you have a dashboard. Um, it's very easy to sign up for different programs, no matter what it is. Uh, you know, not even in home services. And just kind of forget that you've got this dashboard that you can work. Um, but it's very important to keep this up to date. It's where you can track your leads. It's where you can respond to reviews. You can push through reviews. Um, you know, if you don't have a CRM system, which I encourage everybody to have, um, but if you don't, you can actually manage them within the portal. Uh, everything that I've been talking about. So if you want to learn how to, you know, feature instant booking, there's videos on that. Um, so make sure that you're keeping that up to date. And then going into the Home Advisor profile, it is extremely important to, uh, to have a robust profile. This right here on our left is one of our, our largest clients that we have, and they just kill it like nobody's business on Home Advisor. Um, and they're constantly responding to reviews and collecting reviews. And um, there underneath Get a Quote, you can see the instant booking that I was referring to now. You can actually click on that and then view the calendar. Um, you get badges, so make sure you're showcasing those badges, not just on your Home Advisor profile, but also put it in your email signature and put it on your own personal website. Um, just build your, your reputation again when you're matched to somebody else. Why are you better than them? Well, let me tell you why. Um, and then also having pictures of your, your before and after, the products that you do. Have pictures of your team. That's huge. Um, there's, you know, if, if somebody has already looked at your profile and then has seen pictures of your staff, and then when your sales rep walks up and they recognize them, that, that makes a huge impact. Um, so just making sure that you're, you're kind of monitoring that. Um, and then also collecting reviews. It, seems, it can seem silly, uh, but it is critical, absolutely critical. Um, respond to even the bad ones. You each have a list. You can you know, text after you, can, um, after you complete a project with a consumer, you can text them that link. If you get a consumer from another source, whether it's a referral or Google or whatever it might be, um, you can still have them post to Home Advisor, and then we'll call them to verify that you actually did the work for them. Um, so build that up. I've actually got a webinar this afternoon uh, with certainty the manufacturer, and uh, and we're bringing on a pro who has a 3.5 percent cost of marketing with Home Advisor. And, uh, and he's grossed over $6 million uh, in revenue on about $180,000 worth of leads. Is so I called that, him and I said... Hey, Haley, is that available for people to uh, log into? Or is that... Yeah, so I can actually send, I can send you the link because it's going to be more of a Q&A session. Um, okay. So if you guys are interested in popping on that, I can, Brian, I'll send you the link to the to it after, and then you know, you if can anybody, it out. Um, if anybody 
on here, just go in the chat if you're interested in getting that link. I'm not going to send it out to everybody, but if you're interested in getting that link, I know a roadie that would probably be really good for you. Um, <clears throat> um, anybody else that's interested, just hit me up in the chat. And um, actually, you know what? Why don't we do this? Um, what, when we're done, do you want to just give me the link and we'll put it in here? We'll put it in the yeah, chat. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, by the way, um, Trium's uh, marketing director is on this webinar. Isn't that interesting? Hi. Yeah. Seda, Seda's my girl. So uh, uh, we. Uh, yeah, she's here. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Seda. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, I, uh, another thing, too, is ratings and reviews. So, that for the guy that's going to be on this afternoon, he. He said, you know, I have 180 reviews and that essentially sells myself before I even walk in the door. And yeah. when I do follow up with those, he said, when I follow up with those leads, I ask them, I said, did you, did you read through my reviews? You know, I want to make sure that you're, you know, just as educated as I am before I get in the house. And uh, they say, yeah, I read them all. Or yeah, I read several of them. And if they haven't, he sends them the link to his profile because he wants them to see what other consumers have said so that by the time he gets there, they feel like they know more about him but they, that he's already basically got the job. Um, so yeah, join that webinar later if you can. Um, it should be very interesting. So, all right, now we'll dive into uh, to follow up cadence. So best practices for for converting um, leads. So back to Brian's point, which I think we we'll both hit home. You know, we would continue to just hit that home is to try and be the first to reach the consumer. Now, a good way to do this, and, and Brian, I'm sure you also have other recommendations, but definitely have a CRM system in place that the leads can funnel into. Um, and so this makes it easy so that as soon as you get the lead, it goes into your CRM, and then you can call immediately from that. Again, we have, we have recommendations. Uh, I know we, we work with MarketSharp closely and are integrated with them as well as many others. Um, so just making sure that you're calling in within seconds, that you're texting and you're emailing, and these also these systems are able to do that for you. Um, so check those out and make sure that you, you've got something in place that will help you contact them first. A lot of times it's very surprising how many people, they get a lead, they call it, and then they forget it. They, they don't track their leads whatsoever, and that is uh, one of the biggest mistakes you can make with lead generation. Well, Having an and, aggressive... And also, well, and also this call within seconds is the very first thing that's on this page that is critical because i and i don't know what the stats are but basically if you go longer than a minute <laughs> um what is the stat it's like it drops off so dramatically um is it a minute or three minutes or four do you know what that number is yeah, it's like two to three minutes. Two to three minutes. That's what you've yeah. got to get to these people. And, and it, it's been like that forever with, with uh, Home Advisor. And, and so anyway, uh, I just want to make sure that I emphasize that point. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then being consistent with your follow-up strategy. So again, trying multiple ways and multiple days. I've got the next slide kind of diving deeper into that. Um, being prepared for those objections. I, I've actually listened, I think, Brian, to several of your podcasts. You've had folks on who, who talk about how to handle objections and to have, um, you know, your call center prepared for that. So um, I'm just shopping around. Yeah, exactly. Everybody's going to be shopping around because they're shopping around for a new remodel. Um, they're not just going to just say, I'm going to spend $60,000, come do it before they get to know you or before they look around for someone. Um, you know, why are you calling me? Well, you know, was there a, you know, a moment that you, is this something you're considering doing? Um, or I changed my mind. The thing is, don't throw away that lead. You can put them in your pipeline, put them in a drip campaign, uh, follow up with them in the spring. Just because they changed their mind now doesn't mean that it's not a forever change of mind. It's something that at some point was in their mind to do. So it is still a good lead because it's, it's a pain point. They need something done, but maybe they have cold feet. It happens. Um, and then let's, just kind of understanding well, that. Let me just throw something out here. This is where the importance of scripting comes in. 
because when you call out, um, when you are connecting with people, um, they are going to think that you are there to just immediately sell them something. And the mistake that a lot of people make with these types of, whether it's inbound or outbound, by the way, uh, phone calls, is that they're trying to sell them on the job, on the company, and it's all about them rather than about the person on the other end of the, the phone. And so you've just, you've got to get, a, you've got to have a really good script in place that basically talks about, and one of the masters at this is my buddy, Brian Elias at 1-800-HANSET. It's just, you know, his, his whole thing is, and I'm paraphrasing it because I don't have it exactly the, the way that he does it, but it's, you know, I'm just shopping around. Well, great. You know, have you got our price before? Or, or why are you calling me? Or I changed my mind. It's like, well, have you got a price from us? No. Well, you know, our pricing is good for a year. Why don't we just come by? We'll get your price. And when you're ready, then you're ready. You know, it's like you want to take the pressure off. But at the same time, you want to let them know, hey, look, you have a problem. And we're here to solve that problem for you. Okay. They make a lot of leads but you got to have some strategy in place and you got to take this seriously, just like everything else in this business to get to the people on time. Somebody asked the question just now is if the lead is only going to three or four contractors, then why is it so vital to call within one to three minutes? First off, what is the attention span of people nowadays? It's like 17 seconds, right? And so they might've filled out the form and they might've gone through four or five windows, but they're on the internet. They're in a black hole. They could be back. Now they're in Facebook. Now they're looking at all what their friends are doing over the weekend. They're already, they've already probably forgotten that they filled out a form. So that's one reason why you got to get to them really quick while it's still fresh in their minds. The other thing is, is that somebody like a Trium, if you're going up against Trium, Seta is on the phone, well not Seta, but her team is on the phone within minutes or within seconds. And if you are second, right, um, chances are good that, that you may have lost out the opportunity to get into that house because they've already set an appointment with somebody else. And I can keep going, but you know, I just wanna make the point here that you've gotta be prepared and you've gotta have a strategy in place in order to be able to, to, to make this work. Go on. Yep. Back. Sorry, hey, back to you. No, I mean, that's that's 100% accurate. And and again, even if you've done all this work and you've sold it and you're just giving them the quote and you're saying, you know, I know that you're, this is something you're thinking of doing in the summer. So we just want to let you know what to expect if you're looking to kind of prepare mentally and financially for that summer project. But make sure that you're staying in touch with them. You know, like, don't just forget about it and expect them to call you back in the summer. They're not going to remember who to call or they're, you know, all that going back to the attention span and the day and age we're in, they're just going to say, Oh yeah, now I'm ready. I'll just go back online. So make sure that you're staying in touch with them. Yeah. Um, you know, and and, this and is look, some we could, we could have a whole nother conversation about, about all of this, but you know, the, the ultimately the thing is this, that your job is to get into the house your job is to have a good sales presentation that builds value. And if it's a bigger project, like a lot of you do, roofing, siding, windows, bathrooms, if it's a bigger project, you've got to be prepared. Like, for example, if they say summer, that's great. Did you, you know, would it hurt to have our price today? No. But when you get in the house, you're going to offer them, if you know that they're summer, well, why are they summer? Maybe it's time, maybe it's money, maybe it's whatever. But if you offer them 12 months same as cash financing and say, well, wait a minute, you don't have to wait into the summer. We can get this done now. And you don't have to pay for a year. How's that, right? And, and so you've got to use all the tools in the arsenal. The other thing that I'll say is for those of you that are doing like, you know, um, Haley mentioned canvassing. You know, canvassing, you're going and knocking on doors. The job is after you've knocked on the door and somebody's raised their hand is to get now a salesperson into the house. 
the numbers on that, you, uh, you wouldn't believe, you know, it's people that are here, you know, that do canvassing, th those numbers are anywhere from 20% of the people to maybe 50% of the people, okay? The other thing too, which is this is also very similar to a home show lead. And I have clients that, are, that just, that's what they do to get leads is home show leads. It's the same kind of deal because they've walked a home show, they've seen three other companies that do the same thing that you do, they've got information from all of these companies, maybe filled out a form. And so it's the same kind of deal, right? And so anyway, I hope I didn't confuse the matter. But um, go ahead, because this is, this is really good here, what you're going to share now. Yeah, so this is um, a follow-up cadence that was actually given to us by one of our most successful contractors. Um, they, they primarily in Washington and in Oregon. And um, this is some of the methods, methods that they do. Um, so we can email this deck out to you guys, or as Brian said, it's being recorded. But um, just making sure that you're dialing within the first minute. If not, leave a voicemail. This is called the double tap, which they told me about, which has uh, also worked really well for them. So if the, if the consumer doesn't answer on the first ring, they call immediately back because consumers are more likely to answer a phone number that they don't recognize if it's trying multiple times because it means that it's somebody proactively trying to get in touch with them. Um, again, 40% up in robocalls. So most of those robocalls are going to be automated dialers that are just pushing through numbers. Um, but I know, like for me, if I'm getting a call multiple times, and also to leave a voicemail, for sure, leave a voicemail, um, and then text, sorry I missed you, or sorry I couldn't get a hold of you, call me back when you get a chance. Um, so that's, that's really important, and that double tap call has increased their conversion tremendously as well. Um, I know I, I've entered uh, radio contests before where, you know, they say they're going, if I win, they're going to call me. And I still don't answer the phone calls that I get that I don't recognize the numbers on, even though I know there might be a million dollars on the other one. I don't know. But anyway, um, so then trying multiple times, especially during that first week when it's fresh uh, to the consumer. And then after that, put this into a drip campaign and, and you know, try um, hitting them that way and then uh, not throwing away that lead. You've already paid for it, right? So don't throw it away. Um, and then just some stats on the right here. So, Second phone calls increasing the chance of contact by 87%. Um, you know, emails still have a very high open rate, especially if it has to do. So make sure that your subject line in the email is something that is recognizable to them. Um, and then text messaging. You know, people are opening text messages even if just to delete it off their phone so that they don't have those little bubbles that tell them they have 20 text messages. We're using uh, that a lot of, opened. we're using a lot of texting and it, it's critical. Yeah. 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 That's how I found my, uh, my realtor. He, he texted me and he said, sorry, I missed you. Or like, Hey, I'm in a meeting, but call me back on this, you know, whatever. And it worked. So, um, and then here just again, following, putting this into a drip campaign. If you don't have some sort of email follow up, um, I encourage you to do it. Just, Hey, it's leaning into spring. Uh, you know, is your HVAC ready? you know, or leading into winter, have you had your tune-up, your annual tune-up, and, um, and then leading into spring, and then leading into fall, and if you ever offer any discount codes, making sure that you're sending that out. I mean, there's different, there's like different websites that you can use to do this, and just, it's, it's an easy, inexpensive way to make sure that you're staying in front of that consumer. So if you're not doing that, I encourage you to do so. And then uh, finally, in measuring success, uh, I know we're cutting it close here, so um, just to recognize that what lead generation is, it's just a service to get you in front of more consumers. Um, you know, we are the matchmaker, and it's on you to really use these skills to, uh, to, to close those leads once you get them. Um, and it's not, you know, a way to just say, you know, I was matched to a consumer, and I'm probably going, you know, I didn't get the job, so it doesn't work for me. Um, what we, the way that we encourage consumers or contractors to look at it is you spent $1,000 with us. Let's say three of those, let's say you bought 10 leads for $1,000, just throwing that out there. Three of those leads you could never get a hold of. Two of those leads went with your competitors. Two of those leads aren't looking, you know, to do anything now, they're just shopping. One of those leads, you know, whatever, it didn't work out. 
So you close two out of 10 leads. I think most people could agree that they can close two out of 10 leads, um, even one out of 10 leads. So let's just say you close two out of 10. Well, your average cost is $10,000 for you know, the jobs that you do. Uh, I'm just, again, throwing around numbers here. But uh, let's just say your average cost of a job is $10,000. So you just got $20,000 off those two jobs you won from the 10 leads you bought from us. So you spent 1,000, and you gross 20,000. So that's kind of how you have to look at it. You absolutely cannot look at it on a lead by lead basis. This is the hardest thing for me to convey to people. You're not going to get in touch with everybody. They're going to go with your competitors. You're going to be matched with other folks who are going to win the job over you. You're going to get disconnected phone numbers, you know, and that's again why we have credits to help with that cost of marketing. So you have to look at it on a monthly scale, not on a lead by lead basis. You will absolutely go crazy. And I can tell you right now, it's not going to work for you if you have that kind of mindset. It just was not intended to work that way. Same well, as like and, if a billboard, you spend, two, go ahead. Well, and look, I, here's the other thing too. You buy a hundred leads. So lead, different projects have different types. And I know everybody we're, we, we're going over and it's my fault because I keep jumping in. Um, but I think that this is the, the, I think this is important. And for some of you that are on this here today, this could be a very good lead source for you but you, you just you just need to know how to how to work uh, work this system. So Haley, if I'm doing let's say I'm doing handyman work, are my leads going to be fifty dollars mm -hmm. each? No, so it ra it it ranges, and that's what our national accounts team can help you guys with. So I mean, okay. moving services, for example, might be ten to twenty dollars, whereas remodels you're going to hit eighty to one hundred twenty, and then those exact matches could be one hundred eighty dollars. You know, how about? So, but that's because give me an idea. Remodeling job. Yeah, give me an idea on roofing. How much is a roofing lead? To com so a repair for a roofing, which could always lead to upsell, is going to be between forty and sixty bucks, and then. Uh, for an installation, you're looking probably 70 to 120. And the reason I'm giving such a big range is because it's based on your zip code, uh, based on our personal cost of marketing okay. as well. So Chicago is going to have higher price leads okay. than uh, so let's, you know, okay. Sioux Falls. So let's go with 120. Again, this is a math problem, everybody. Okay, this business is all about math. And by the way, we're doing this at Accelerate. You know, we're going we're gonna to uncover and unpack the, what I call money math for contractors. I think two out of 10 is, is not really doable. And I think that if you based your numbers on, and I'm sorry, Haley, but I just want to, I would rather be much, much more conservative. So if we can yeah. buy, it, so if it's cost, if we're in the roofing business and a lead is costing $120, okay? Um, so, and let's use the same, let's use the same uh, 100 leads, okay? That is 120 times 100 is $12,000, okay? Now, in order for this to be really profitable, really profitable for you, we want to cap our spend at about 10%. Okay, which means that that $12,000 needs to return $120,000 in sales. Okay, so if we do $120,000 in sales and your average job is call it 10,000 again, just to keep the math simple, out of those 100 leads, you have to convert 12, which means that you probably have to get in front of about 30 just to be on the safe side, out of those 100, okay? Now, there is also, let's say, so let's say that that's at a 10% lead cost. Okay, let's say at a 15% lead cost. So at a 15% lead cost, that's gonna be 12,000 times 6.67, that's 80,000. So at a 15%, if your numbers are, you know, if you've got the right amount of gross margin, you may be able to push it on something like this to a 15% lead cost, which then means you have to sell eight out of a hundred. Okay. That's how you've got to look on this. Haley is right, but I like to break this down even for, let's not do hypotheticals of what you might be able to do. Let's actually figure out what the number is and then you test it. 
you know, run 20 leads, give it, you know, give it at least 20 leads, do everything that you can to get those 20 people. And I don't know, I wonder what, is Seta still here? Seta, if you can in the chat, let me know of the home improvement or the home advisor leads that you guys get. What percentage of those do you actually get in the house? I would be really, I would be really uh, curious. And let's see if, um, what number she gets back at. But anyway, that's how you do the math on this, okay? You gotta plug in your real numbers and you know, you've got to know what you're going to spend and then you've got to know, okay, this is my target number in order to make this um, uh, profitable. Okay, so one of the people said in-house less than 30%. Okay, so 30% works if your conversion rate is a third. That means you get 10. Spent 5,000 and sold 120. Nice. Okay, sorry, I'm looking at the chat. You should be able to see that too, Haley. Yeah. So those are, so look, so those are good numbers, right? He bought, I don't know how many leads, got in 30% or a little less than 30%, but converted that to $120,000. In October, spent six, sold 150. Well, look, you got, you got a fan on here, Haley. Let's keep moving. Yeah, I know. Sorry, James how much more? I'm, I'm sorry. I've taken this way over time. Um, <laughs> are we close? Well, it's good. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, uh, and just to answer Joe's quick question about the spin targets. So there are different, it's, it's a rolling cycle. So whenever you turn it off or reset it and all of these different things, it does reset your algorithm. Um, lots of things that you and I can actually dive into personally so that I can explain how that all works to you. Um, but, but there is a reason for, for that, but it shouldn't be extreme in terms of what it, what it's going over. So anyway, that's, that's how you should look at ROI. And of course, I mean, remodels, like, uh, you know, you're not going to close two of 10, that's insane, but you know, maybe, maybe if you're even just getting a 5% conversion, um, you're still, you're still going to see, be, be seeing great profits. So, um, and then I think just measuring that campaign success, looking at it on a monthly basis, um, seeing, you know, are those customers that you're getting, are they becoming promoters? Are they leaving reviews? Are they getting you out, uh, you know, out on the road referrals? So, you know, once the client, it's a client for life, it has nothing to do with home advisor anymore. They could be, you know, whatever. Um, and then just making sure, you know, have we driven any business for you? And if not, I think that there's ways that we can look into your account and establish some best practices to help you actually um, start seeing some better success. So next steps for you guys and in conclusion here. So G4 has actually, uh, marketing has negotiated some great discounts for you, um, you know, because you're in the network. And so it's, it's all intended uh, mutually to help you guys grow your business, get more sales and, and help with, uh, you know, lower that cost of marketing. And so through that, um, if you're not a member of Home Advisor, you're going to get 50% off those market match leads for the first 30 days after you sign up, something that's automatically triggered um, if you're a G4 uh, marketing dealer. So just making sure that you're letting us know that you are. Um, and so that too, online lead generation is a whole nother beast. And so this will help offset some of those costs. So let's just say you're in roofing and you're getting 50 bucks off your roofing leads for 30 days. That can go a long ways uh, to help you, especially as you start building up those reviews and and getting the hang of things. And then additionally, you'll get an ongoing 5% quarterly rebate. Um, so this will be issued in the form of a credit at, into your account at the end of each quarter. So the next one will be coming up in January. Um, and again, that just to help offset the cost of marketing for you, um, which can really go a long way. So they did that for you guys, which is a really um, awesome thing to see. So uh, we do have another benefit of, of the G4 partnership is that um, you guys get account managers for the first 90 days after signing up, which is not something that the traditional program gets, you know, without the partnership. And uh, that's intended to help you with those kind of growing pains once you're on board, to help you uh, see what your forecast in your market is, how much is, de is demand out there, what would uh, make sense for you to take on realistically, um, and, and build up that profile, make sure it looks good get you just rocking and rolling from the start. If you're already a member of Home Advisor and you have any questions, whether it be spin target questions or how do I integrate instant booking or anything like that, feel free to give that, um, that phone number a call there. 
And if, then if you're not, if, yeah, if they're already using Home Advisor, can they still get this deal? So the 50% off is for sure only for new because it's triggered at the beginning. Um, the 5% was negotiated for new members only. Um, but, but Brian, that's something you and I can talk off, off offline um, if okay. you're wanting to expand it to already approved members. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah, if you're not a member yet, feel free to, to shoot me an email or if you have any questions about this, um, I'm happy to help answer any questions. Uh, the partner liaison here so feel okay. free to give me an email and this, uh and that's all she wrote on my side so that's awesome so look so a few things here and i'll and and we'll wrap up it's really important that if you are going to do something like a home advice you've got to be prepared so if you don't have a crm go get market sharp get market sharp so that all of these leads immediately go inside of market sharp Boom, then it comes up on your screen. You give them a call immediately. Follow that schedule that, that um, Haley gave you. Have a script that's going to overcome the objections that you know you're going to get from people. Um, then when you do get into the home, ideally, you want to have a one-call close that builds value, offers financing, and, and really is, you know, I, I talk about this all the time. You have to approach every single one of your prospects and customers as trusted advisor, okay? Not just another salesperson. And these things, look, when, when these leads, the benefit of having market sharp or like a market sharp, but you know, I, I really recommend if you don't have a CRM, don't go mess around with any other ones. Just go get market sharp because what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to execute on the, um, the keeping in touch part where if you didn't get them right now and you need to call them back or you need to text them or you need to email them, that's all going to already be built in. Okay, that's already going to be built in. You just have to set it up right. It's like anything in this business. You can't just passively hope or wait for this thing, these leads to work for you. You have to work them. The guy that is on here, I don't know, I'm not going to share the name, but um, I know him. Um, the person that said, uh, spent 5,000, sold 120, spent 6,000, spent 150. You know what he also said? He said, you have to follow up constantly with calls and texts. That is key. You can't be so busy that you just get the, the lead and then you ignore it, right? If they don't answer the first time, you got to stay on it, got to stay on it, got to stay on it. Just like you would with a home show lead or an event lead. All right, so cool. So um, do you, Haley, can you share the link to that webinar that you're gonna do later today and just put it in the chat? Yeah, let's see if I stop, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen. And I am going to put in here, accelerateevent.com, go there. Um, Haley, do you know what your coupon code is off the top of your head for Home Advisor? No, I don't. Um, but that, All right, so I'm going to give but, them. I'm going to give you G4s. Just do G420. Okay, that'll save you some extra money. Do this if you're serious about coming to Accelerate. You haven't bought the ticket yet. Get it this week. It goes up on Saturday, I believe, by a hundred bucks, which is not going to kill anybody. But you know, there are only like thirty some seats left. Um, oh, and then there's the webinar. Now you're doing that webinar just for certainty, right? Yeah, so we actually just um, announced a partnership with them as well. Yeah. Um, so it'll be a it'll be a Q and A session. Um, okay. A Q and A might... session with that. Yeah. yeah. Typically, yeah. Typically, if it's if you're not a certainty dealer, typically you would not like have access to these things, but. Um, there's only a few people here. It's okay, right, Haley? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it'll be, it it's be gonna okay. be some of the same stuff that we talked about today, right. um, 
or, yeah. or right now, but um, yeah, also just hearing from one of your peers is uh, pretty unique. So, all right, okay, so. Um, I think that's it, everybody. Thank you so much. Remember, if you sign up, um, they are going to give you 50% off the first month if you're not using them. 5% um, rebate, which I like a lot every quarter. Um, and that's it. If I can answer any questions, let me know. And uh, Haley, thank you. And I will see you in about, I don't know, in a few weeks. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, thanks everyone for jumping on and I hope you have a wonderful uh, holiday season. All right. Thanks all. All right. Bye. Thanks. Bye.